we are. 46. <laughs> Honestly, God, people, you have to understand, it is literally the most difficult part of the entire evening determining what number we're on. you think it'd be easy, <laughs> but yeah, we, we struggle. All right, day 46. It is Whiskey by God Wednesday. Now, I got to tell you something. So... In my life, my career, it's, I don't even know. Some of you probably have no idea what I do. Probably half of you figure, this guy's a, uh, just a housebound alcoholic. Fair. Uh, but I actually do a lot of public speaking. Um, and uh, I've learned a lot of tips and tricks and what you do, what you don't do. I'm going to give you one right now. If you're a public speaker and you ever have to go in front of an audience, one of the rules is this. You should never apologize for what you're going to say and it's just a, it's a it's a it's a reaction people say oh i know we've got a topic you don't like and I, i'm sorry we have to do this or i'm sorry that i've got it whatever you never apologize not before not after never it's rule one. it's not rule one it's like eight now saying that i have to say this i apologize for what we're going to do tonight because <laughs> of all the drinks we've done this is not the best one but by God, we're going to do it. As a matter of fact, hold on. I'm not saying it's a weird night, but I think I need a beer for this one. You might want to grab a beer as well. Not a good beer. Not a, not a class. This is Miller High Life night is what we're doing. That's going to help. It's going to calm the nerves. Are you ready? Come on, let's go. Blue Monkey Quarantine. Now we do have a little special stuff tonight, so I, I'm not going to get too too upset about it. But come on in. All right. Hold. That's cold. That's cold. That's good. Forty-six. Forty-six quarantine cocktail shows. It's been fun. It's being fun. And uh, one of the things that's come out of this, in the process, we ended up naming the bar the Blue Monkey Quarantina. And uh, the name stuck. You saw the monkey on the front. Um, well, one of the fun things that's come out of this is uh, we ended up meeting someone uh, uh, through friends. And, uh, well, let me just show you first. I'm going to unveil to you the official Blue Monkey Quarantina sign. Oh, boom! Folks, I, I want you to take a look. That, I, I, I'm just going to say, that is just, it makes me cry. I mean, it's just, uh. So, let me tell you where this is from. Shout out to Mike. So, Mike is actually a tattoo artist uh, in Harrison, Ohio. He runs the Broken Needle. I'm going to be going there soon, as soon as we're allowed, whenever that is. Uh, I'll have that man tattoo me in a heartbeat. But uh, we told him what we were doing. <clears throat> he said, I can make you a sign. We gave him free reign. We said, we need a, we, it's the Blue Monkey Quarantina, and by God, we need a Blue Monkey. And this is what we got. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be a t-shirt. Uh, that's going to be a glassware. I think we got a brand. All right. <clears throat> that was the first thing we had to talk about. Now this fiasco. Oh, God. It's Whiskey Wednesday. Now, we're going to talk about a, a new whiskey. Now, you know, I've realized that when it comes to whiskey, I think a lot of people are just nervous. They're challenged. You know, if you go to a bar and you're like, oh, what kind of whiskey do I get? And, oh, there's things, there's scotch, there's Irish, and all these different things. So I thought I'd start off tonight. If you can give me just a couple of minutes. I've always been nervous ordering whiskey out because I don't know what they all are. So anyway, I found this cool little, uh, well, actually I made it. And it's a cheat sheet. It's a little pocket card. And uh, what I do is when I go to a bar, I can pull this out and then remember what all the different ones are. So I'm going to share it with you tonight. And uh, I can make these available if need be. But anyway, this is a nice little thing. You slip it in your pocket. 
and you have it, and then you're going to be able to keep track of all of the whiskeys. Let me go through it real quick. So your first is the Irish whiskey. So the first big question, is it whiskey with an E, W-H-I-S-K-E-Y, or is it without the E? Irish was the first, and they have an E in it. Very important. It's from Ireland. It's normally malted barley and grains, and it's always in a wood cask, a lot of times an old bourbon cask, minimum of three years. This is convenient, folks. Scotch whiskey. Now, Scotch, when they were coming out, they said, F you, Ireland. We're not putting an E in our whiskey, so it's spelled W-H-I-S-K-Y. True story. Those are both... Uh, appropriate spellings of the word, but it depends on what whiskey. <clears throat> it's from Scotland, in case you didn't figure out the scotch in Scotland. Malted barley uh, instead of, so this is barley and grains, this is pure barley. Oak casks, a lot of times bourbon, minimum three years. Now what makes scotch a little different, they normally have a finish process. So after the three years, they'll throw it into like an old port or sherry cask, and that's what gives it its flavor. Now, American rye, <clears throat> back to the E in whiskey, made in the USA. This stuff's all over the place. You can get it anywhere. What makes it? It's got to have at least 51% rye. Makes sense. And it's always, always in a new charred oak cask. <laughs> oh, yeah. Canadian rye, no E. Yeah, Canucks, you're crazy. They're following the old scotch. It's from Canada, in case you didn't pick up the Canadian rye. Now, here's what's funny about it. It's some rye, <clears throat> but there's no percentage, and it's mostly corn. Sorry, Canada. The secret's out. Wood cask, minimum three years. Now we go to bourbon. Now that's what we know, right? Uh, we have the E. It's Kentucky. It's, it has to be at least 51% corn, charred oak, but there's no aging requirement for bourbon. You can put it in as long as you want. Tennessee whiskey. That is its own brand. Now, Tennessee whiskey, back to the E, you can get it anywhere. It's made all over USA. However, they've really clamped down on this. I gotta be careful. I've had this thing for years. It can get anywhere in the US, but Tennessee has really defined what it is. And in Tennessee, to be Tennessee whiskey, it has to be brewed in Tennessee. They're trying to make a claim for it. And it's got to go through a special filter process. This is by definition. And it's where it's called the Lincoln County process. And it's where they put it through charcoal. You guys don't care. But I'm telling you anyway. And it's 51% or more corn. Um, charred oak. No aging again. Oh, there's more. Japanese whiskey. This is the newest. This is a craze. Made in Japan. In case you didn't figure that out. Malted barley and grains. They follow scotch even without the E, uh, and it's in oak. Now, they'll use all sorts of oak, used bourbon containers, casks, all that, but the ultimate Japanese uh, uh, whiskey is in a Mizanara oak. That's local Japanese oak, and that stuff is like hundreds of dollars a glass. Now, the last one, and I had to add this on to mine, is what we're here about tonight, and by God, it's peanut butter whiskey. Now, Where's it? Uh, it's got the E in it. It's made in San Diego, California. Of course it is. It's anything where it's out of California. Sorry, California folks. What do they put in it? Corn, barley, natural flavoring, and cane sugar. So it's actually a weaker drink. It's not the high proof of everything else. And what do they, uh, how do they make it? They won't describe, but I believe they put it in giant empty gym jars of peanut butter and that's how they age it. Um, anyway, uh, if you guys want one of these, they're very convenient. They fold up, boom, put it right in your pocket. There is a demand, apparently. Is there a demand? There is. I love it. Make what? those available. Group discount. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, that's your whiskey uh, hillbilly edition, uh, hillbilly pocket cart edition. Now, what are we doing tonight? I will tell you, I have had numerous requests to make something out of this damn screwball peanut butter whiskey. And I've been afraid of it. But I'm drinking beer tonight. Uh, this is my first one on, on the camera. 
and we're going to use it. Now, <clears throat> history on screwball. All right. Oh, hold on to your seats, folks. You got to go back to 2018. Yeah. Yeah, that's how new this stuff is. We're going to Orange Beach, California. All right. Uh, Steve Yang, uh, who is basically a restauranteur and a bartender, has a place called OJ, uh, OB, sorry, OB Noodle House. And uh, he starts because, so he's a, a refugee from Cambodia. And he tells his story that when he came uh, over from Cambodia, he got hooked on peanut butter. So it's like his favorite thing. And then apparently he's an alcoholic because he wants to mix it with whiskey. But he, at his place, uh, OB Noodle House, he starts mixing peanut butter with whiskey, and it was a shot that he would serve to customers, and it took off. Well, enter his wife, Brittany Yang, who's a chemist and a lawyer, and they start marketing it. And they put it out, and this stuff has taken off. The promos on it are amazing. So... There's, just, there's a lot of recipes. They'll tell you you can mix it with any other drink and then just change the name to screw or peanut butter. And so you can have a screwed Manhattan. You can have a, uh, you can, wait. well, we're going with the Reese's peanut butter cut tonight. Now, what is it? Well, it's pretty simple. Get your screwball uh, whiskey, two ounces. That one's mine. And that one's Shelby's. And then Godiva chocolate liqueur. I mean, you know, I will say this: if you've not had it, you can smell the peanut butter off of it. I mean, it's 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 a strong peanut butter smell. It's got to be good. Uh, equal part of Godiva chocolate. And then the last part, one ounce of cream uh, so there it is come back give it a shake you know it's going to be good um, although I've read different uh, reviews of it and some people have said uh, for God's sakes uh, whatever you do don't drink it straight up but if you mix it, it's delicious. Uh, somebody else made a comment, you know, it's the perfect thing to pour over ice cream. So now we're going to, uh, because I had these, I'm going to use them. Now those are plain ice cubes. And then we're going to come back, <clears throat> pour that over top. Now, the last thing, we need our secret ingredient. We're coming in with this little bad boy, which if you're ever going out on a whiskey night, you want to bring this. Emergency. It's a thousand milligrams of vitamin C in the pack. Emergency. Thank you again for 46 nights of nonstop sponsoring. So, I figured this works because if you've ever seen a pack of Reese's peanut butter cups, they're orange. This is orange. So, I... Yeah, that's all I got. We're just going to put a little bit on the ice. And there you go. I mean, what could be wrong with this drink? I think it's going to be delicious. Just getting ready. All right. Screwball. Oh, my God. That's dangerous. Uh, it is so smooth. It's like an adult milkshake. Peanut butter chocolate milkshake. With an odd hint of orange. It's delicious. So, anyway, <clears throat> there you go. For everybody that said make a screwball cocktail, there it is. Reese's Peanut Butter Screwball Cocktail. Um, last thing I'll tell you about this little adventure from 2018, the Yangs, they're in a lawsuit. So apparently there's three people that are suing the Yangs because they believe they all should own part of the company. Like a 
major league baseball player, some guy from TV announcer, and some pro from an alcohol or uh, uh, yeah, an alcohol uh, distributor. And um, so there's an ongoing lawsuit. So to the Yangs, I will say, hey, great peanut butter whiskey, and welcome to the world of <laughs> alcohol. What you need yourself to do is get yourself a Hemingway to fall in love with your drink, because then you're going to make it. Folks, mm. that's 46. Thanks for visiting the Blue Monkey Quarantina. Um, let me know how many people like this new chart, this pocket foldable chart, because this bad boy, <laughs> yeah, we're going to be putting that up there. It's convenient. Thanks again. We really do love you all. We miss you. Uh, I don't know how many more of these we have left. Uh, things are loosening it up. I, I will say this. My plan, our plan, is this. We will have this show every night until we can go to a bar and sit down and have a drink. If it's a week or a month, God help us. We're here till then. Uh -oh. I, I was asked if the chart is laminated. And if it can, can be, be laminated. It absolutely can Sorry, be Sorry, I, I did not mean yes. to pipe up, but we, multiple we requests. And we have a larger version of people with bad eyesight. Uh, we can make it bigger because I know sometimes a small, fine print. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I always forget. And I apologize. I know there's a lot of birthdays. And it, it seems appropriate because I got a buddy out there, Mr. Michael. And uh, it's his birthday tonight. His and... brother's birthday. Wait. It's Sean's birthday, not Michael's it's birthday. It's Sean's birthday? Yes. Well, it doesn't matter because both of those guys are screwballs. And it's the perfect drink for you. I love you both anyway. So, uh, hey, happy birthday. And you know what? Guess what? 47, tomorrow, quarantine cocktail show. 7.30 p.m., we'll be here. You should say that uh -oh. we, will prob we will be here for Cinco de Mayo. Mm. Or Cinco de Rayo. We will be here, absolutely, May 5th. It's, for God's sakes... It's the like perfect storm. It's, it's it's the coronavirus, corona. It's Taco Tuesday and it's Cinco de Mayo. It's unbelievable. We're gonna have to have at least two drinks, if not more. There there will be shots of tequila on Cinco de Mayo. So get ready. Tell your friends. Um, anyway, this is going long enough. I'm gonna finish my drink. Love y'all. Good night.